And that's all Snake Eyes has been doing. And when I point it out like that, all the times that Snake Eyes has actually been blocking all of the crap from a screen away, doesn't feel threatening anymore, right? <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to It Was Tuesday. Got my buddy Nathan here with me. Sorry for all of those people listening to this on podcast. You're missing out on the cutest cat in the world. Mwah. But uh, we were talking about Zangief and his improbable run uh, via Snake Eyes at CPT slash Canada, uh, uh, Canada West. Uh, Can U.S. slash Canada West uh, for the Capcom Pro Tour. Snake Eyes winning that, in particularly in a grand finals reset over J uh, JP being played by Reynolds. And so uh, I talked about that. Does that mean Zangief is bad? I, I really just don't think it does. Uh, I, mean, I mean, does that make Zangief not bad? I don't think it does. I think Zangief is still bad. You're going to knock over my soda, Nathan. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, Nathan is trying to get some uh, belly rubs over here. But uh, I talked about that, so if you wanted to catch that video, if you're watching this on YouTube, check out my channel. It should be up right now, uh, where I talk about why I still think Zangief is weak, even though Snake Eyes was able to one win. Uh, but we're actually going to watch the matches now. So let's actually take a look at uh, these matches here with a little bit of a distraction over here. I'm just gonna move this here and just show you guys that this, here he is, dude is still sitting here. He is trying to be the cat. He is always trying to be the cat. All right, okay, let's go ahead and watch the matches here, but we're not just gonna watch the grand finals match over here. We're actually going to watch the winner's finals match, because this is really important here, because uh, Reynolds smokes him. So uh, we're not going to pause or kind of analyze this too much over here, because like I said, I don't want to take too much time uh, analyzing these matches. But let's just take a look at this and see what Reynolds does here and why Snake Eyes had trouble in the winner's finals here. Again, this is three out of five in this situation, and you see Snake Eyes is trying his best to approach... But then Reynolds, you know, throwing out some anticipatory buttons, getting him to walk into it. Now, it's really important. I don't know if you actually saw it, but Snake Eyes walked backwards a little bit. Sometimes walking backwards away from zoners is what you want to do. You want to reset the situation because a lot of the times when you get into the mid-screen situation, uh, that's where zoners can actually have more power here. And that was just a fortunate sequence right there. Again, Reynolds having good reactions with the anti-air back to the zoning again. And, you know, Snake Eyes is doing what he should do. He's been doing his due diligence, trying to find his way in, trying to reach with the crouch heavy kick, trying to jump in and getting successfully anti-air. Reynolds so far has just been reacting really, really well. Now you see right here, Z S Snake Eyes being very patient to see what Reynolds was going to do. And Reynolds, oh God. Let's not even talk about the Lariat. Let's not even talk about the Lariat. Oh, God. Okay. Dude, right? Like, Reynold, if he had won this, you know, every, every, we would all be having a different conversation right now. But you can also see that these... Ma God, the strategy of... Crouching medium kick, crouching medium kick, crouching medium kick. But again, right there, Snake Eyes losing a little bit of patience right there, jumping at an obvious time Reynolds was ready for. There is frustration involved over here, and that's what we're seeing from Snake Eyes here. Uh, one of the easiest ways to lose against a zoner is frustration. Is then because then you start jumping like a, a spaz, right? Uh, I, you start jumping like a madman and doing a lot of things that are impatient. And there we go. The first sign of using OD amnesia here. So this is something Snake Eyes is going to remember. He's going to remember the very first time I got the chance for real pressure. It was OD amnesia. And Snake Eyes here burns himself out. And again goes for the heavy kick so that he can keep pressure going here. Unfortunately, Snake Eyes is burned out, so there's really not much he can do, and he's just going to take a bunch of chip. Doesn't prevent JP from getting out of the corner. And a beautiful confirm from Reynold. Again, you've got two hits on that Stribog to be able to react uh, and hit confirm with. So Reynold was able to hit confirm that, took game number one. 
And again, it's just, it, it's basically, uh, it's basically what you expected, but we've seen Reynold go with that crouching medium kick. And now you can see how Snake Eyes has used that information and he got the whiff punish on one crouching medium kick attempt. And now you can see also Snake Eyes is choosing to be particularly aggressive, jumping like four times in a row because he's expecting uh, Randall not to think he's going to do that a bunch of times. So he's trying... Oh, the spike saved him! Ha! Ha! The spike actually saved Snake Eyes. Because <laughs> he actually blocked that and the spike prevented him from going into the wall. But again, Snake Eyes... Adaptation, two things. With punishing the crouching medium kick that he saw Reynold like to use, and then at one point decided to go jump happy to surprise Reynold uh, out of nowhere. I don't know what that drive parry from Snake Eyes was. Down forward throw so he can get pressure. Just keeps going with the pressure. Checking to see if Reynold is still going to keep using that OD amnesia. But here we go. Trying to bust in here and... He's down in life, but he's winning in terms of the screen uh, space here. And so here we go. Very good position here for Snake Eyes. Down forward throw, so he has Oki. Stomp, yep, that's the throw loop. Wow, how do things go wrong? Oh no, he drops the combo. Oh, that's brutal. That's brutal. He gets that hit, but he didn't get anything afterwards. He was probably trying to cancel into a level two and he's gonna die from this. And doing the stab is down forward medium punch. And doing down forward medium punch into a super command is actually a lot trickier than you think it is. I've seen Snake Eyes complain about that input. Uh, it's, it's bizarrely difficult uh, to do properly. And so because of that execution difficulty that Zangief has to master, uh, Snake Eyes ended up losing that round, which really sucks. So even the winner's finals here could have been very different. He's going to let this rock. So he gets the side switch here. <laughs> Say Jan was good. Yeah, it's, it's an, a really annoying input. Like it's super annoying to do. Well, Snake Eyes is winning in terms of the drive meter, but you'll notice one thing about what Reynolds doing too. Oh, and he baits out with the fake, and that's burns out Snake Eyes. So that single little trick right there with the uh, ghost feint into drive rush throw won him this round. Like literally that won him this round and this game basically was uh, getting that one feint. And that's where the power of JP's... Uh, uh, ghost faints come in. Oh, what a jump by Snake Eyes. And he's going to start with a big damage. The input come back to of the stab, Zangief stab, which is down forward medium punch into level two super. Quarter circle forward times two plus punch. It is a very annoying input to have to input. And I love uh, Jay uh, Reynolds there using the teleport when Zangief jumped as an anti-air to side switch as well. And holding up forward at round start, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't let anybody tell you that there's anything wrong with that. I do it all the damn time. Uh, sometimes that's just what you want to do because you just have a read on the opponent. But here we go, corner situation. And like I said, the power of JP is not the defense, the zoning that he has. If you've noticed, the zoning hasn't necessarily been what's killing uh, uh, Snake Eyes. The thing that's been killing Snake Eyes has a, a lot of the times been the offense uh, that JP has. Oh, yeah, here we go. So... Snake Eyes took a chance. He tried to be aggressive with the two portals out there, and that's just not a good idea. But you see how Reynold is dashing up to Zangief. See, he's still going in on Zangief. He's pressuring him. Again, this is really honestly where JP is super frightening. And here comes Snake Eyes and just a hold up back, which works really well against Zangief, unfortunately, because Zangief's level one is also super slow. What a kick. I love that. That was so nice. But the crazy thing about this is, even though uh, JP, I'm sorry, Reynold wins this 3-0, he does a really good, I mean, Snake Eyes did a really good job, kept it close, won the first round a bunch of times. So it wasn't, it was, the seeds were there already for Snake Eyes to already be, uh, to, to be able to win this. He's clearly doing well. It's just the little small things here.
and there that are causing him problems. And again, I would analyze this a little bit more, but I don't want to take this forever. So this winner's finals match, I'm just letting this one play through. And when we get to grand finals, then we will definitely examine that at a lot slower pace here. So here we go. Snake Eyes, again, choosing to go with the Lariat to get a little bit of Oki here. But you'll notice one thing is that Snake Eyes hasn't ever really landed any SPDs. Like, has Snake Eyes landed an SPD yet at all? I don't think he's landed a single one in this entire set. <laughs> he just hasn't had the ability to, but that is a great indication to you of how good Snake Eyes can play even without the SPD. Oh, God. Oh, he's not going for the drive impact. There it is, and unfortunately, yeah, Reynolds is waiting for it too. In Snake's own words, says Baron Spaghetti, when JP was on defense, all Geef had to do was walk and block, and I'll get to my destination eventually. Exactly. So a lot of times when people complain about JP's turtling, it's only really when you are burned out that it becomes a problem, as you can see right there. Clearly, when you're burned out, all of a sudden, the chip damage becomes a problem. But if you aren't burned out, you know, you have to watch your drive gauge, to, obviously. That's going to be one of the big things about it. But if you can fight it, because you always have to remember that the JP has to predict where Zangief is going. So we're going to watch this grand final set, including the reset here. Uh, I'll leave the volume on very lightly here. Let me know if the volume of the video is actually kind of getting in the way of me talking over here. Uh, but we're going to watch this match here, and we're going to examine this little by little, how uh, the players are approaching this. So, uh, again, here comes Say Jam and Jeremy doing the commentary here. Again, I, I haven't watched this footage. In I've watched it, but I haven't watched it in terms of, like, for an analysis. So this is going to be a lot of on-the-fly analysis here. So let's see what Snake Eyes actually tries to do differently. But, again, walk, block, and see, here's the thing, right? It's, it, I can't emphasize this enough. This was a huge read already, right from the get-go, okay? So if you block a ghost, you are minus in this situation. This is not a fun situation for Zangi or for anybody. And even in this situation, even though he wasn't totally minus, the spike is going to hit Zangief. If JB, JP does ghost in the spike, 90% of the time you will get hit by the spike. If you're fighting against JP, every time you block a ghost, this is a mix-up situation here. Because what Reynold or any JP can do now is throw out a spike. And if you block the spike, you're actually plus two. So now you have about two frames to move before JP does. And even though that's not huge, now JP has to guess what to do after he ground spike. Is he going to ground spike closer to him because he's expecting you to dash forward? Is he going to ground spike in place again because he expects you not to move at all or he expects you to try to jump and it'll catch you out of the air? Is he going to ghost afterwards because he expects that you're going to try to do something and not expect a ghost to come in from the front? Right? So that's the idea here. So because Reynold knows if people block a ghost, you should not do anything because you can spike and the spike will win. One of the strategies for Reynold, and which is what he does here and what the strategy he does for JP, is he does two ghosts in a row. So he does a ghost expecting Zangief to stay in place. And so he throws out another ghost, and so basically he steals a turn. He resets the mix-up, and now you got to guess again. Snake Eyes makes the hard read after blocking the ghost, and he just jumps. He just jumps. He's like, you're going to do two ghosts. So already, Snake Eyes with a hard read at the beginning. And again, this is just one read, but it establishes this to Reynold to understand that Snake Eyes is willing to go off the beaten path and do something a little bit weird here. So he gets this big old combo here to start and immediately drive rushes in here. And then this is a bona fide mix up here. Now remember, we haven't seen uh, Snake Eyes, we didn't see Snake Eyes land a single SPD in the first set. And I think what Snake Eyes is telling himself is, I gotta get some more SPDs in 
because I can't I haven't been able to get him to respect the threat of the SPD as much so I need to establish the SPD right away so drive rush standing strong is tricky because uh, he can continue the standing strong and I believe it is a frame trap if coupon is still in the chat he can confirm that to me even off of a drive rush. I know this is a combo on hit but I think uh, on block, this is still a frame trap between the first two strongs off of a drive rush. And so basically, you're scared of the second standing strong because you don't want to get hit. And so Reynolds just blocks. And so right away, Snake Eyes is establishing stuff. In this first match, right away, he's established that he's willing to jump after blocking a ghost. And that, look, the SPD is back, okay? I'm, I'm SPDing you. Lands a light SPD, no pressure after this. And then this is a classic move from Zangief's after SPDs is to use the forward heavy kick. Because at that after the micro walk, Zangief is not at a range which a lot of people can hit him. He's like minus 16, mind you, but not a lot of people can hit him, and this becomes a spacing trap. This is a very common spacing trap for Zangief, so you have to be careful about this. Now, JP clearly has moves that reach very far, which Reynold tries to go for, and it doesn't hit, and you can see Snake Eyes w just woke up with the sweep. He was doing this. He was just like, you know what? Here comes the spacing trap, pow. So already he's showing things that he didn't do in the first set at all. So here we go, meaty, not scared of any sort of, ah! Not scared of any sort of uh, OD amnesia, just goes for the combo right away and establishes himself with the perfect. Now this is a great <laughs> message to send. This is a wonderful message to send because what Snake Eyes is telling Reynold right away is that I am going to be aggressive. I'm going to be a lot more aggressive than I was. And so now he's, what I think he's trying to do is prevent Reynold from trying to be aggressive back. He's trying to force Reynold into the zoning game a little bit more because as Snake Eye said himself, shout outs to what Baron Spaghetti uh, gave us that information. I think Snake Eyes would rather fight the zoning than the offense of JP. That's my guess right now. That's my analysis right now. And so immediately checks it, right? So he's looking for the drive rush. Again, I think Snake Eyes' whole plan right now is to prevent the offense from Reynold more than anything. So he's checking that, and now he's bulldogging his way forward here. <clears throat> Willing to jump again, continuing to bulldog hard, but nice, perfect. Pe wow, that didn't punish in time? Jesus. And so what you're seeing here now from Reynold here, not as much uh, of the aggression, although he's walking forward here. Nicely done by Snake Eyes. So Snake Eyes hasn't really had to deal with the zoning yet. He's really just kind of been playing this mid-range game with Reynold. And he's really focusing on this mid-range game. And he's winning it right now. And so this is where he's really kind of throwing a, a, a thing into Reynold's brain about having to try something different. And again, Reynold here with a beautiful mix-up. Looks like a throw. Goes low. Catches Snake Eyes. Launches him full screen. And here we go. Pressure back again. And again... A lot of people don't understand this, but when you're fighting against zoning, one of the best things to do is to be at a known distance, is to be at a known distance. If you're fighting against JP right here, you don't really know how far away you are from JP. These are all kind of unknown ranges. Like you're like, wait, am I close enough to do this? Or am I close enough to do that or whatever? He blocks a ground spike here and then watch him. He walks backwards and parries. He's trying to get full screen again because this is kind of now I've reset the situation. We're full screen. Now I'm going to try to get back in. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of times when people are fighting zoners, all they do is try to fight their way in. They get frustrated. They keep pushing forward. And if you're always going forward, then JP is always going to know where to put the ground spike. He always knows you're going to jump. And he'll have the anti-air ready, etc., etc. So Snake Eyes backing off a little bit, resetting the situation, and bringing it down back to the core mind games. Because when you're a full screen away from JP, you've reset the mind games back to, I block a spike. Now you have to guess, JP. You have to guess. And that's kind of what Snake Eyes is doing. You see how he's just kind of chilling after he uh, walked back there and blocked a little bit here. So he walks back, blocks a little bit, 
just kind of slowly walking and blocking. And he tried to anticipate that, dude. He tried to anticipate that. You actually see him go into the air. He sees it, and he tried to hit it, but he was too late. And so Reynold, again, trying to surprise Snake Eyes with a little bit of offense, but now backing up. And again, Snake Eyes is winning the mid-range over here. Yeah, he parried the ground spike. He parried the ground spike. And again, remember, you don't have to... Parry just parries everything, and you could do it while walking forward. So it's actually an easier way to walk and block. <laughs> so here we go. Have the situation again, and unfortunately, catches the landing frames, punishes landing frames, pow. So he tries to jump, and Randall just happened to dash forward, which caught him off guard. And so now we're back to this full screen. And you see right there? Spike, spike. See? Spike. Spike, and caught him out of the air there. So, uh, unfortunately, because the portal is something he didn't use, same thing what I said with Ghost. If you block the portal, you also have to respect the spike. So, if you, uh, I mean, I jokingly call them stalactites and stalagmites, but nobody remembers which is which, so I'll call them the portal spike and the ground spike. So, if you block the portal spike, uh, you also have to respect the ground spike. Snake Eyes did not got caught there, that's a perfect example of that. And so now Snake Eyes is doing the thing again. As you can see, he's trying to bulldog his way through. And, and Reynold knows that bulldogging is annoying as well, so he decides to throw on EX Portal here to give himself an even bigger advantage. And so see how it stops Snake Eyes in his tracks? And again, after the portal, Snake Eyes is not respecting the ground spike. He still tried to walk forward. He got caught by Spike. But again, this is all a part of the mix-up here because if Snake Eyes chooses to block in that situation, he blocks the ground Spike. He's plus two. He has a little bit of time to move forward and put JP into a guess. But what Snake Eyes is trying to do is he's trying to bulldog his way in because he thinks that uh, Reynold is going to steal a turn again. Uh, if he uses the command grab, Zangief will jump. Uh, so if he uses, uh, the command grab, you're talking about JP. Uh, JP's tried the, 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 the command grab one time and Snake Eyes did jump away from it. So already one time he did get away from that. But here we go, walk and block. But you see, this is why he keeps planting the portals out here, because the portals give him that extra advantage here. And it sucks, but a lot of times you kind of just have to bide the time for the portals to go away, because you also have to remember, this is an expensive resource to use to keep doing this. That's two blocks every time. So if you just let the spikes go, Oh, and he walked one of the portals off the screen, too. So he planted two portals. As soon as a portal get off the screen, actually, it was uh, Reynold who walked it, who jumped back it off the screen. The portal disappears. As soon as the portal goes off the screen, the portal disappears. That wasn't Snake Eyes doing it there. That time was actually Reynold doing it by mistake. So he only had one portal over here, but he still got the full screen. And this is still a crappy situation. And you can see how Reynold plants the close spike just to really hold this whole entire scene over here. And so Snake Eyes is having trouble walking in. But again, Snake Eyes knows that his guard meter is the important factor right here. And as long as he only blocks occasionally, he's kind of at a net zero in terms of the drive gauge. So he's willing to walk and block. And see, he makes it over one spike here. So here comes the ghost. And then he jumps there because he predicts the spike coming and he makes it through. I don't know what the stomp, I don't know what the hell the stomp was about here. Might have been a mistake, but it lets Reynold get away. And now Reynold is running away. And now here comes the double portals again. Reynold walks one of them off the screen again. Misses. Oh, oh, but no whiff punish from Snake Eyes. But again, keep in mind here that from about this point here where we were talking about this match here. Let's see here. I want to point out, like, from about... Let me keep going back. Okay, from about this point. So we're at 47 seconds left on the clock. All right, let's see what Snake Eyes does here. Walk, block. Walk, block. Block. Get hit. Okay, from this point, 41 seconds. Block. Block. 
tries to drive rush, gets hit. All right, 35 seconds left. He only has a chunk of life left. Block, 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 block. Jumps over, accidental stomp maybe. Dude, from 35 seconds to 15 seconds, he literally did nothing but walk and block. And JP is now out of drive meter. And he has drive meter himself. He's still just walk and block. And finally he put, that's the first button he's pushed. The other even two times he got hit were a drive rush and a jump. That's the first button he's pushed since like 45 seconds. All right. So again, a lot of the times if you're losing to JP, a lot of the times it's because you're frustrating yourself and you're letting the JP bully you. Snake Eyes there just didn't press an attack button for 30 seconds off the game clock here. And then he got in. And then <laughs> Reynolds died. So look, again, 30 seconds of Snake Eyes not doing a single thing. That's the first button he pushed. And all he did was slowly walk Reynolds to the corner. Reynolds burnt himself out because like I said, those OD portals are expensive. That came into play. And here he is, he's scared now. And so he jumps and then Snake Eyes with the reaction, boom, splat. And there you go. This is so important to understand when you're trying to fight. So again, Snake Eyes here winning the first game off of that bulldog. And it's just, it's, it's so impressive to see. And that it's a really strong lesson to have. And you can see Snake Eyes again, trying to start off very aggressive, trying to find a way to jump in here, but Reynolds is ready for it. He faked, has the meaty, you, per, you parry when you land after the air reset, because a lot of the times they go for that high low mix up. Be careful of the throw ghost. He will do that every once in a while. But you can see that Snake Eyes is still trying to be very aggressive here. And Reynold also still trying to be very aggressive here. Successfully gets the full screen here. But back to this again with Snake Eyes just walking and block. Oh, Reynold could have got a lot more than that. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, you can see this is what Reynold wants to do. He actually wants to be aggressive. And did he go for the throw ghost right there? Is that what he did? Yeah, he did, and he was actually too close. And Zangief actually manages to get the back throw, so now JP is in the corner, so this kind of sucks. Yeah, checking his forward movement, jumping over the button check here. So again, this is Snake Eyes just having all the right reads here, right? Checking the dash, then says, you know what? You're going to try to poke me, so I'm going to jump. He pokes and whiffs. He gets a free jump in, and now you've got to deal with the mix-up over here. Just goes for the standard light buttons, was hoping that... Uh, Reynolds would be holding up, trying to jump away here. So he was trying to catch him out of the pre-jump frames or maybe catch him standing here. Didn't happen, so now Snake Eyes has to reset the guessing game. But he's keeping this pressure here. He's keeping this pressure, and he gets the jump in with the right timing on the read again. Again, this has nothing to do <laughs> with the character at this point, right? This is the important thing to understand why Snake Eyes is just ridiculous. Once he's in this situation, he's just reading when Reynold wants to poke. Snake Eyes is so good at this. He's one of the best at this. So he just gets this jump in on the raw heavy punch because what he's suspecting is that Reynold is tired of missing with these buttons. So he gets outranged. And so Reynold's like, I need to counter his range with my range. And so Snake Eyes was like, yeah, you're going to hit heavy punch. I'm going to jump. And so he does. And it works out for him. He gets the combo here. Now mix-up timing. And then crappiness of the crappy lariats. I'm sure Snake Eyes was very mad at that point. Oh, God. And here we go. 50 seconds. Now, remember, Snake Eyes didn't do anything for 45 seconds in the last game. What makes you think Snake Eyes is going to push too hard here? Well, he has no life now, but he's got plenty of meter to block. So you're still not scared of dying to a block. Ah, uh, but see, that time Reynold finally had the right reaction there. So good anti-air from Reynold. And here we go, Snake Eyes back to this strategy. And again, the whiff punish is here. And I'm not sure what Reynolds was trying to go for with this towards heavy kick. 
I guess he was just trying to outzone Zangief. I don't remember if Reynold had landed this a couple of times in neutral. Unfortunately, he just misread the distance and he's going to get punished countered over here. But again, Zangief gets no Oki off of this, right? He gets good damage off of it, obviously. You can see right there about like, what, 18% damage right there. But Reynolds, you can see his whole strategy is OD portal and then just chip away at Zangief. So every time he's kind of in a not sure what to do, OD portal. And now here he goes, poking away, trying to build the range. And twice now, Reynolds has gone for the crouching light kick. This time he actually goes for the throw. So he actually throws Zangief backwards. And what does he do immediately? OD portal spike, right? So back to this respect game over here. And you see right there, spike, portal, portal, spike. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Take it, take it. As a player, take it. And you can see what happens here now is that Snake Eyes is expecting him to maybe go for a second ground spike. So he jumps and he was right. See, again, if you're the JP player at this point, when you block the ground spike from a screen away, it's up to you to guess now. If he had done a closer spike, he would have hit Snake Eyes out of the air. But he predicted Snake Eyes was going to stay a screen away. And Snake Eyes predicted that he was going to go for the far, far spike, so he jumped. Again, when you are fighting against JP, one of the key things here is when you block a spike at full screen, when you block a spike at full screen and there is no portal in the sky, this is a mix-up. This is a guessing game time. Is he going to ground spike at you in front of him or is he going to throw out a ghost? If you don't move forward and he does the ground spike in front to catch a jump or a dash, he's now stuck for 60 frames and you have all this time to get, you know, get, get in closer to him. If he actually goes for this far spike, but you jump or you have a better dash, you'll go to just avoid it. And now you're even closer to him. JP has to guess in this situation. He can throw out a ghost to do something crazy or throw out portals again. But this is the whole idea. When you block a spike at full screen, it is a guessing scenario. And that is how you have to fight against JP. If you don't realize that you are looking for the spike to block at full screen, then you're never going to beat JP. Blocking a spike at full screen is a reset. The situation is reset. Nobody has an advantage anymore. You're in true neutral. Force the JP to guess. Don't always dash forward. Don't always jump. Don't always stand still. Mix up your options after blocking a ground spike to keep the JP guessing at that point. And so Snake Eyes with the right guess jumps over. And again, just the spacing right here. Again, I, to me right now, it feels like the main difference between the first set and the second set is really that Snake Eyes is winning the mid-range game. He's just staying out of the range, crouching strong, and look at that. He actually micro-walked backwards, too. He actually micro-walked backwards. Ooh, it's, look at that. Oh, God. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And he gets the sweep, and then he goes for the safe jump here. Uh, not sure what... Reynolds tried to do. <laughs> uh, uh, and then, uh, okay, let's see how Snake Eyes follows this here. Okay, he just goes for the heavy kick to get the Oki in this situation, you can see. So he can get the meaty headbutt. Plus on block here. And see, this again is a Snake Eyes thing, right? The ability to read that... This is a plus frame right here. If Zangief does another headbutt, JP can interrupt this with a button. However, if Zangief goes for a light button like a crouching light kick, Zangief wins. So what Snake Eyes does a lot of times is he steals a lot of turns. He goes into the headbutt and he knows that the opponent is scared to press a button, so he goes for another headbutt. Or in this particular situation, he knows it catches people trying to jump away. So again, this is not necessarily like a character is busted kind of thing. This is Snake Eyes with the smart reads here. He gets away with double headbutts more than any Zangief player I've ever seen.
honestly. And this flattens, so guess what? Dry rush mix-up time, and he just goes for the repeat here. Way more plus. And so he goes for another headbutt again, and oh my god, he was just trying to burn him out. That's what he's trying to do here. Uh, uh, burn out. And now what do you do? And now, oh Jesus. Oh boy. Uh, burn out, catches him low, cancel, dead. Oh yeah, Zangief is terrifying for the average player, and that's because most average players don't want to fight grapplers or they don't know how to fight grapplers. It's very important to be able to fight grapplers properly, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, and for reasons that I mentioned in the previous segment. And wow, Reynold, a little bit of a sign here that Reynold says, you know what, I'm just going for the level three. I want the life lead right now because I want you to be nervous. The problem with this strategy here from Reynold is that there's no chip damage in this game. And, you know, maybe he, and, and again, if you look at the drive gauge, there wasn't really any reason to get Snake Eyes scared uh, at, at, at this time, right? So he's, he, he went for this level three. I, I, I think he just went, I think that was a little too aggressive, in my opinion. But it is showing a little bit of the discomfort that Reynold is experiencing in the second set, down 0-1, that you won 3-0 last time. Because again, uh, Snake Eyes doesn't have to worry about chip damage. Now, obviously, from this situation, look, watch his drive gauge just disappear in this sequence here. Reynold is just eating that drive gauge to death here. Nice parry on the double ghost swing so he can actually get some, uh, some drive gauge back. But Randall wants to be aggressive and maybe a little too aggressive. And again, you're a Zangief player and you just got hit by crouching medium kick. All right, let me tell you something. Well, let me tell you what every JP likes to do after they hit you with crouching medium kick. They like to crouching medium kick. Every JP does crouching medium kick, crouching medium kick, crouching medium kick until it's blocked. Every JP does this, dude. <laughs> they all do this. It's such a good strategy here. It is such a powerful thing to do. What does Snake Eyes do in response? He sweeps. <laughs> he sweeps with one of his slowest buttons at a range where he can get punished on block. Again, this is, this is the hyper galaxy brain of Snake Eyes. <laughs> He got hit by crouching medium kick and his response is to sweep. Like, there wasn't even a gap. They didn't even see Reynold walking forward. He was just like, I'm sweeping. <laughs> like, what makes you do that? <laughs> like, this is the reason why I can never do what Snake Eyes does. Because I get hit by this crouching medium kick. I'm like, crap. He swept <laughs> and he caught Reynold walking forward. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? Did he just read that Reynold was going to try to be aggressive in that situation and steal some turns? And then he gets to kind of come in here. But Reynold waking up with buttons says, you know what? No, no free headbutts for you. Back to where you are in the corner here. Tried to go for the low to fake. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe he was trying to read a drive impact from Reynold. Doesn't matter. Reynold doesn't react and blocks it. At least he's kind of out of the corner here. <laughs> And it's really hard to stop JP when he neutral jumps as Zangief. I think you can heavy kick if you anticipate it to beat that jump strong. But here we go. Snake Eyes now still trying to bulldog his way in here. Yeah, and yeah, there you saw it right there, finally. Got it. Crouching medium kick, crouching medium kick. And he hit him. So Snake Eyes tried to do something again. He tried to galaxy brain it again, but got hit twice. And see, then... Reynold was like, okay, now I'll steal a turn. Hit, hit, now I'll steal a turn. That's got what got swept last time. So this time Reynold made sure that he hit him with two of them so he can steal the turn. And he's just trying to burn him out at this point. Yeah, and again, you see right there, it wasn't the zoning that Reynold won with. Let's go, like, watch the whole end of this round over here, right? So, like, if we watch the whole end of this round here, after he hits him with the level three, Reynold, look at Snake Eyes never leaves the corner. 
he can't get out of this situation here. He almost got out with that, and then the uh, drive impact helped push him out just a little bit here. But otherwise, he never got out of the corner. So again, it's not the zoning from JP that's the problem. It's honestly his offense is really the problem. Oh, Jesus. And so Reynolds ties it up one to one. Again, the checks from, oh, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was, Snake Eyes. Now, Snake Eyes has changed his button configs a little bit. Uh, that might have been a drive parry. This might have been a drive parry right there. Because he might have been trying to drive parry uh, the, the, the drive, uh, Reynolds drive rush. He saw the drive parry, maybe thought it was supposed to be a drive rush, tried to drive parry. He's changed his buttons because he used to have uh, the drive parry and drive impact as his shoulder buttons. But I know, I think he swapped out the parry for the lariat so he can anti-air better. So I think that's what happened right there. That might have just been a, a bad muscle memory problem. And so he's just going to start off very badly here, losing about 20 to 25% life at the start of a round for a, a, essentially an error here. And you're going to get caught out of the air. Ugh. But, oh, no. Wow. Okay, Reynolds is uh, dialed in here in this round. He's dialed in. But again... We got a successful jump in. How did he get the successful jump in? So spike, spike. You see, remember how I said that the after the spike, uh, it's JP's turn to guess. It's JP's turn to guess. So he goes for a spike, and he's right this time. He guessed right. He did a second spike. Snake Eyes didn't do anything. And then he guessed right that Reynolds was going to throw out a ghost, and so he does jump after the spike. Again, after you block a spike, is a very, very key moment. It is a guessing moment for both players. And again, if you are not realizing that after you block the ground spike from JP, it is now a guess for both players, you will never beat JP and you will always die to his zoning. So you block the spike. Snake Eyes at first guessed that he was probably going to uh, maybe do a close spike. Like he's expecting a close spike here maybe so that he will avoid it. So he just walks and blocks. But instead, Reynolds does the spike in the same place. And then Snake Eyes was like, you're probably going to spike again in the same place. And he jumps. He goes for the ghost. Still, jumping beats two options. It beats the spike and the ghost. So he manages to get in here, goes for the sweep, tries to rush in there, gets the medium punch. And then he goes for the entire sequence right here instead of the SPD, hoping that he'll touch a button in between, but he does not. And so now Randall then manages to sneak in there as well with his own dry rush. Again, sneaking in with the dry rush and now back to full screen. And again, respecting and see, even there, he didn't respect after the portal. The portal, oh, because he triggered it. He saw, so if JP manually triggers the spike off the portal like that, if he triggers it, he can't spike right away. So you have to also watch when JP manually triggers the portal. If he triggers the portal spike, it's the same thing as a ground spike. You're in that guessing situation again because he is stuck in this situation. And so Snake Eyes knows that. So his guess is to jump forward. Sure enough, JP Reynolds throws the spike in the same place. So Snake Eyes makes over it and now has an advantageous situation and jumping and sweeping right there. And so there you go. And so, yeah, this is good info for facing JP, but this is how Snake Eyes is winning because he knows this. He's researched this. I'm not, like, everything I'm saying here is exactly what Snake Eyes knows. And this is why he's able to, wow, how did that miss? <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa. Excuse me? Uh. <laughs> I've got nothing to say to that. 
I have nothing to say to that. I have no idea how that did not hit Zangief. I have no idea how that didn't hit Zangief. Uh, weird. Oh, that's not Trip Guard, Swamp King. It's a completely different thing. I, I'm, I'm flummoxed on that one. Okay. And so instead, that means Snake Eyes had the advantage in that situation. So he just throws out a button here like that and catches him. Yeah, it might not have been active or it might have left its active frames or something like that. Something weird happened. And look at this bait here. See, and look at this. He knows. Snake Eyes knows again. Like, you hit with this crouching medium kick and you're like, all right, I have an advantage in this situation. But instead of advancing forward, Snake Eyes knows that Reynold likes to counter poke. Uh, I mean, if, we, if I downloaded and installed a Hitbox Viewer uh, mod, I probably could see that at some point, uh, Investigation Cone. I just don't have the Hitbox mod on my, uh, on my Street Fighter. Uh, someone else could do it, for sure. <laughs> I think uh, Gelatin Lab can do that. That was at like seven minutes, seven minutes, okay. But look at this, Snake Eyes gets the hit, and a lot of times... You get the hit, and that means time to advance. But instead, Snake Eyes, look at this. He walks backwards. He actually baited Reynold into trying to poke him. And Reynold didn't expect Snake Eyes to walk back. And so what a beautiful whiff punish. Oh, he didn't drive cancel it. I could have swore that was going to be a drive cancel. Uh, no drive cancel. And maybe he tried and just missed it. But now, back to the walking and blocking and... Again, you see how Reynold doesn't want to play the zoning game. He gets him to block the portal spike, goes for the plus frame drive rush overhead, and then just plays it safe and hits light punches afterwards. So Reynold could have tried to steal a turn, but if he just throws out light punches like that, there's nothing Zangief can do outside of a level three or a level two. And a level two probably wouldn't even be fast enough to punish the jab in that situation. So he just goes for the jabs to save things. Snake Eyes tried to hit buttons, he got hit. And now we're back full screen again. And now you got to deal with this again. But again, you see how Snake Eyes is just walking and blocking, right? It's frustrating, but it's a known frustration. And as long as he's got drive gauge to block this, he's okay. And again, after he blocks a, gra a ground spike, he chooses to make a hard read. He jumps right here. He jumps like he chooses to make a hard read. And now uh, he teleports through and goes into the throw. That was really smart from Reynold because you're so scared of the cross up in, since, in this situation. Yeah, I'm thinking it might have just been a missed input. So crates, I, I, I kind of believe so too. I kind of believe so too. And here he goes again. Wow, Reynold is being really aggressive right now. He's really trying to change it up. He doesn't want snake eyes to be able to continue to walk and block and again as you can see here as much as we say like oh my god this fight is impossible for zangief zangief can't win this fight jp zoning is too good the zoning hasn't been a factor <laughs> the zoning hasn't really been a factor Right, All the times that he's been getting hit by ground spikes and air spikes and portal spikes and ghosts and everything like that, they're just like, bide your time, block a ground spike, now it's time for the guess. And that's all Snake Eyes has been doing. And when I point it out like that, all the times that Snake Eyes has actually been blocking all of the crap from a screen away doesn't feel threatening anymore, right? <laughs> It really doesn't feel threatening anymore when I tell you, look for the ground spike or the manual air spike, and then it's a guessing game. That's all Snake Eyes has been doing. That's all, most of the time you guys die when you fight against JP because you block a ghost and try to do something. You block an auto time, you know, an, uh, an automatically triggered air portal and you try to do something. Those are not the times that you want to do something. The only time you want to do something after, for example, blocking a ghost is if he goes ghost, 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 because he notices you're not doing anything. That's the mix up for JP. But if he goes ghost, 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 then that opens up your ability to block a ghost and jump. But if the JP autopilots ghost into spike, let him, 
let him because after the spike, you are in a guessing situation that JP does not have the advantage in. He does not have the advantage. It is an equal situation right there. He has to guess where to put the next ground spike in order to interrupt you. And if you're getting hit by the forward one and the back one, like I said, the problem isn't JP. The problem is you're being predictable. And that's just all it comes down to. Understand, after you block the ground spike, what are your mix-ups? Stay in place, dash forward, jump forward, find one of your crazy moves like a headbutt or a run slide with Kimberly, et cetera, et cetera. But understand that after you block the ground spike, it is a mix-up situation. It is a neutral situation. That's exactly what it is. It is absolutely, you are back to the neutral game. Every time you block the ground spike, it is a uh, neutral situation, Hazanshu, drive rush with jury, drive rush with DJ, headbutt, you know, it's, that's the thing. Block a ground spike, neutral. Always remember that. Look for the ground spike block. That's how you fight JP. And so that's all Snake Eyes has been doing, really. So the, the zoning hasn't been the problem. <laughs> The, the key to this has been the mid-range game. The mid-range game has been everything here. Oh, God. He just got caught by the spike. Thought he could get past it in time. And now full screen away after taking damage. Oh, go! Oh, wow. He went for that. Okay. Yeah. So, obviously, that's a great button. I think it's back heavy punch with JP. This one right here. Lots of recovery. Lots of delay. Very punishable. But just huge range that catches low when you don't expect it. So Snake Eyes got hit by that, lets him set up an OD portal, and now you go for the mix-up again. But again, as you can see, oh, he tried to lariat the jump strong, didn't work. But as you can see here, Reynold has no interest in playing the zoning game against Snake Eyes, because it's not working. Oh, here we go. He should be dead in this situation, yep. Wow, this, the, the first set was closer than I thought. I thought the first set actually went three to one for Snake Eyes, but no, he's actually down two to one here. And so, yeah, Snake Eyes is in big trouble here. Like, this looks like it's the end, right? Like, if you're watching this at this point, you're like, well, okay, everything's back to normal here. Reynolds gonna do his thing. JV's just gonna zone, and that's gonna be over at this point. But you see the bulldogging here, and, and the bulldogging actually rewarded Snake Eyes with getting close enough here. And so he goes for the poke and actually catches Reynold before Reynold can actually poke him. You see the counter hit right there. That's because Reynold was trying to do his crouching medium kick. And so again, notice again, did the same thing last time. He hit with the crouching medium kick, and instead of using that for pressure, Snake Eyes walks backwards. And again, this seems like so counterintuitive, but he walks backwards and it, he fell for it again. And even though Snake Eyes doesn't have the whiff punish this time, uh, even though he doesn't have the whiff punish this time, he's like, shoot, I'm not going to react in time, so I'll use the recovery to walk forward. And he does. He uses the recovery to walk forward and sees what uh, Reynolds going to do. Is he going to panic? Well, Reynolds just happens to hit standing meeting kick, which is a great option because then he can push him away with, again with the Stribog. But again, Stribog, Stribog, let me tell you right now. Stribog, uh, JP Light Stribog is minus 10 on block. All right. <laughs> The medium one is minus eight on block. So, as he blocks this, Snake Eyes is like, you're minus 10. I'm just walking and I'm gonna jump at you. So he's using that minus 10 to get, to catch him off guard and he actually does. He catches uh, uh, Reynold off guard here, goes for a little bit of a combo. I don't know what he was trying to do. Was he trying to bait him? To he doesn't have the meter. So he was just trying to see what Reynold would do, but Reynold jumped back. And again, if you're Zangief, this is not a loss. You want to push the opponent towards the corner. And again, walking bulldogging again. And now he's just going to block because he knows the stupid portal spikes are coming. So he blocks the overhead. He's just being patient here. And again, no reason to panic. No reason to panic. 
back to fighting normally. Tries to jump there. That's not going to happen, and you get hit. Yeah, he, I think he was expecting him not to cancel this into a Streebog. I think he was just trying to jump after the stand heavy punch. Wasn't expecting the Streebog, so he actually got caught there. And now you're back full screen again. And so after blocking the ground spike again, there, it's not neutral. There's no mix up here because there's a portal spike up there. So again, after blocking the ground spike, this is not neutral. This is not a neutral situation because there's an air spike there. So what happens? He just chills, blocks it. Oh, did he manually trigger that one? Let's see. Uh, he did not, he did not. Okay, so snake eyes, but he still chooses to jump. He still tries to jump uh, afterwards. So he's still being aggressive in this situation here. So he blocks this spike and then he block it. But again, the air one's there, so he's not gonna do anything. But see, again, look how, look how Snake Eyes is playing this. He's not trying to go too hard here. Oh, that was smart. So a lot of times people will try to drive Perry across the screen because they want to drive Perry the spike. A lot of JPs see this. And so they try to teleport and throw you. And Snake Eyes said, you know what? I am actually just going to get out of here so you can't throw me. Oh, what a... Tr I can't believe Reynold traded in time. That's crazy. That... If you're Snake Eyes, you're mad. You're like, come on. Come on. I read that throw and he crouching heavy punch and we still traded. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Oh, you are rubbing your head all over me. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Nathan. I know you're hungry. Be patient. Okay, and now back to the bulldogging again. And you know what the crazy thing is? This whole entire fight here has felt really shitty for Snake Eyes. Look at the life difference, dude. It's not that crazy. Snake Eyes has no reason to panic in this situation. Okay, now it's time to panic. <laughs> Now it's time to panic. And you see that. You see how Snake Eyes was like, here we go. And so he tries to push a little forward. He tries to keep walking and he just walks into the ground spike. So a little bit of frustration. Like I said, the trade off of the crouching heavy punch, the big old combo into the level one super. You can't help but get a little frustrated here. So tries to drive rush in there. There we go with the OD portals again. Tries to catch him low. Good patience from Snake Eyes, but Reynolds burns him out. Yeah, this is this is a crap. Oh God! And he burns, he burns Reynold out. This is scary. Oh God! Oh God! Yo, <laughs> Reynolds like, oh, oh God! Oh God! I'm alive! I'm alive, dude. That was scary. Yo, this was so scary of a situation, dude. Oh my God. Yeah, when he got hit by these headbutts, dude. Ow! Ow! Uh, oh god oh okay okay that jump away basically won him the round <laughs> and here he is tournament point for reynold tournament point for reynold here oh and he blocks an overhead oh then he got frame trapped by buttons oh is he close enough oh yo so <laughs> Snake Eyes has had this trick in his sleeve this whole entire time. But the thing about it is, he was going to save it, I think, until he really needed it. And he really needed it right now. <laughs> so here he goes. Uh, uh. Okay. Back to this again. Oh, wow. What was... Reynold actually did button, button into portal activate this is a massive turn steal i don't know if this was a mistake because literally snake eyes could have spd'd him he could have done anything he wanted to him at this point i don't know if this was a mistake but now Reynolds has got to pay for it with this mix up here and he actually just goes for the spd the spike hits him and that sucks and now if you're a fan of snake eyes you're like well shit here we go God, look at that pay look at that decision by Snake Eyes. Knowing that that portal was there, didn't bite on any of this. Does get frame trapped. And again, Reynolds wants nothing to do with zoning. He wants pressure. But Snake Eyes does manage to find that. He knows at this range right here, like I said, minus, what did I say it was? Minus 
16 or some minus 10 or something like that. So he catches him. Yeah, that's a punish counter right there. So he catches him and then slowly tries to move forward. It's the second time we've seen him use standing heavy punch. It's only the second time we've seen him use that. Oh, God, caught out of the air. Oh, and a sweep, and it killed the portals. So what he's actually doing now is he's seeing when Reynold wants to do the portals and he's been catching him. Actually, he, that wasn't even a punish. That was a counter hit. He just hit Reynold trying to hit a button and now you're in this mix up here and he baits out the amnesia. That was like the first time he did the amnesia since the first set and Snake Eyes read it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, dude, this is it. This is it. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, what makes you think to try to do that? Did he whiff cancel the light kick? He whiff canceled the light kick. Yeah, because I think that was three that he spent there, didn't he? Yep, he actually whiff canceled the light kick into the drive rush with the new mechanic and somehow scooped him because that jumping strong missed again. If that jumping strong had hit right here, Randall just did it too early. Look at that. And maybe it's because Zangief is hunching forward when he drive rushes that made it so that it missed. Oh. And Snake Eyes lives to fight another round. Dude, if that jumping medium punch had hit, that was the end. That would probably have been the end of the entire tournament right there. All right, checks the dash right away. And so what you're starting to see right now is Snake Eyes is reading the fact that Reynold likes the OD portals. And so now you see this? Normally, Snake Eyes would have walked and stopped because he's scared of something. But he realizes that Reynold is very reliant on OD Portal. And so instead, look, look how far he walked. Like, he didn't blink. Like, look at this. Dude, he just didn't care. He just kept walking. He's like, you're going to OD Portal, and I'm going to get in your face. All right? Unfortunately, it didn't pay off for him. And then Reynold gets the same old mix-up that he always gets on him. And now we're back in this situation here. Yep, double. See how, but see again. Look how Reynold had to predict ground spike, and then he did, oh, he did the far ground spike again, and uh, Snake Eyes just walked forward and got hit. So Snake Eyes probably th maybe thought he was going to go for a closer one or something, but it doesn't matter. Here comes all this stuff again. Ground spike, he knows the portal's there. Ground spike, back to neutral. And so he starts to walk forward, sees him plant the portal, so he just keeps walking forward, sees that the spike is there, stops at the spike, and now continues to walk forward. Again, it's always after the ground spike that Snake Eyes chooses to try to cover some distance. And he is walking him to the corner. So the mistake that Randall is making here is that every time he does the ground spike like this, he should probably throw out a ground ghost or something, right? Because Snake Eyes is not jumping in this situation. But what Randall is trying to do is, is as long as he plants out a portal then Zangief can't freely move forward. So he's always planning a portal, and so he can play this game, but the problem is, is that uh, Snake Eyes keeps slowly moving him into the corner. So this is the first time Reynold does something different in which he manually launches the portal spike to catch Zangief, and he can combo off of that? Oh my goodness. But unfortunately, the combo drops. Again, this could have been a big difference if he had got launched full screen away here, but instead he whiffs, and Snake Eyes gets a counter hit over here. But Snake Eyes is not full screen because of uh, that draw, that combo. That's punishable. You see, and remember I told you that back heavy punch, very negative on block. And Snake Eyes knew that, gets the punish counter, and now he gets to come in here. Oh, God, OD Amnesia. What a parry choice. Blocks the low option. This oh, no, execution mistake. That was, uh, I think, let me see. He tried to walk up and probably tried to crouch kick. Then, like, he saw, he probably tried to crouch something. He saw Zangief jump, and then he tried to do crouching heavy punch here. And so what happened was the first down tap that he was trying to do to hit low right here, 
He wanted to hit low, so he hit down, saw that Zangief jump, the control went back to neutral, then he hit down and heavy punched to anti-air him to try to trade like he did last time, but it registered as down-down punch as the spike, and so that just gave uh, Snake Eyes a huge opportunity there. So, and a burnout? So this whole situation happened, and yeah, this, this sucks for Reynold here. Oh my god, the heavy... Oh my god, you are ridiculous, Snake Eyes. And that's a counter hit. Oh. And it just goes downhill from here. Oh. Dude, that one execution mistake changed everything. Oh boy. Two to two. Back to the bulldogging. And again, this has been a mix-up that Reynold has done all day. This has either been throw or crouching light kick. And uh, Reynold has been successful maybe about like 40% of the time on this. But both mix-ups don't result in a ton of damage, right? You get thrown or you get low short, low jab, stand jab, three bog. You're a screen away. It sucks. Both of them are a screen away. Both of them are going to do about that much damage. Nothing significant. So Snake Eyes hasn't really been super bothered by that. So he's just willing to take that mix up. But here we go. It's slowly bulldogging. And again, the, the spike. And then he sees the ghost. So he manages to jump over it. Blocks the ground spike. We're back at neutral again. He decides to walk. And you see now Reynold is throwing out the ghosts. But the problem is he's so scared that Zangief is going to jump that he throws a ghost into a ghost fake. Oh, a check again. Too far away for that to hit. And oh boy. Oh, that could have been bad right there. Who oh boy. Missed. Ah, missed. Just missed. Just missed. And that actually gives Snake Eyes the opening to find that crouching medium kick button. But again, as you see, Snake Eyes has a strong read, crouching medium kick, and then he walks backwards. He's been able to bait this button out of Reynold after his own crouching medium kick hits like every time. He doesn't really do anything from it this time, but still, oh my god, what a read on that jump. And that's just, that's just again, Snake Eyes says, I'm jumping now. And he got him, dude. That's crazy. Right when he planted the OD portal. That was so far. That was far. And I don't think Reynolds was expecting that. I think Reynolds was like, I'm going to be able to press a button before he gets to me. And there's a counter hit right there. So Reynolds woke up with a button. Oh, God. And he did it again. Dude. He was like, I'm going to headbutt you and screw it. I'm going to headbutt you again because I just want plus frames. And Reynolds hit a button again and got hit. And so now here comes Snake Eyes with the stab into the dry rush cancel pressure. Oh boy. And Reynolds being smart, not fought, just staying patient, knew that Snake Eyes wasn't going to go for the SPD. But again, the problem is now he has him in the corner. And so you can see he's just trying to be aggressive. So Snake Eyes in this sequence right here says, I have all of my life. I've taken that damage from the throw at the start of the round. I just need... One more hit, and one more hit, and I win. So look how aggressive he becomes. So you know what? I'm going to jump. I got hit. Whatever. I'm going to try to sweep. Whatever. I'm going to try to slash, stab. Whatever. And then he got thrown. He was trying to do everything he could to win with one hit right there. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So now he's back to this situation again. But again, as you can see... Patience, block, block, okay, plants another spike, block. He's watching JP to see if JP's starting any animations here. <gasps> oh, he threw him out of the overhead. He threw him out of the overhead. Oh, my God, that was a panic, and it worked. <laughs> I think that was supposed to be a throw tech. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and so, no, reset point. Oh, man, Reynold is trying so hard, again, to be as aggressive as possible. <laughs> and really, right now, a lot of what's actually kind of hurting him is a little bit of the over-reliance on the OD portals. 
Snake Eyes is really learning to use the, the, the startup of the OD portals as ways to sneak in. And again, beautiful spacing here by Snake Eyes. Walks, do you see him walk back? Look how important it is to walk back sometimes, man. Look how important that is. And he knew it, too. He had that all scoped out and ready to go. The scoop! And it's the heavy scoop! Oh, damage. So, again, off of this one decision right here, this walk back, look what he gets off of that. Oh, finally the SPD. After all this time, I think that was the medium scoop right there. And then... <laughs> I felt the entire collective Zangief playing world groan right there. I felt the entire Zangief playing world go, <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, it's so unfortunate. Oh, and then again. So, okay, Splock, Bulldog, Block. Oh, and he just jumped. He just, again, just a prediction. Just a prediction. And that kills the air spike. And then from that range, drive cancel, hit, hit, level two. And is this going to kill? It does. And we have a reset. But again, I mean, it was so close. It was so close to going Reynolds' way. But, I mean, what have we learned from that first set so far? What do we learn from that first set? A lot of the things that I've been talking about here, again, are very, like I said, it's a lot of it is Snake Eye's decision making. And it's a lot of what he is able to read what Reynold wants to do. We haven't seen a lot of situation where it's necessarily been Zangief the character doing the work. Again, yes, if Snake Eyes wanted to play Ken, would he be doing better and be almost invincible? Probably. <laughs> but he's able to do this with Zangief also because the character gels with him. It's so important to play a character that you care about and it just makes you play better. So, you know, if, like I said, he cared about Ken, he would do better with Ken. But he cares about Zangief. And so a lot of this win, as you can see here, has really been off the back of what Snake Eyes wants to do, right? Because a lot of the things that he's landed would have resulted in way more damage with other characters. <laughs> so a lot of it, again, is less Zangief mix-up and more just Snake Eyes just playing so smart here. Wow, crouching strong. We haven't seen him use that button at all until just now. And here we go, full screen. Uh... Back to this again, bulldogging. And so even though that portal spike was automatically triggered, oh no, he triggered it. Okay, so since JP triggered it, yeah, so Snake Eyes went for the guessing game again and he forward jumped and he was right again. So again, block the ground spike or a manually triggered portal spike, it's a neutral game. Always remember that versus JP. And he just sneaks... Oh, God, that was far... Oh, no, I don't know what that was again. That might have been the uh, muscle memory habit problem again. But, yeah, you can see that Snake Eyes just trying to stay close right now. And, again, walking forward because he knows Reynold wants to activate the OD teleport. So instead of walking and blocking, walking and blocking, when he predicts the uh, OD t uh, the portals, he decides to keep walking forward. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, Kakeru obviously is a different beast entirely, for sure. But again, Snake Eyes is kind of the player that will change what he's doing based off of how Kakeru plays. Like, he'll, he'll, he'll examine Kakeru uh, when it comes to Capcom Cup. Uh, is Kakeru, Kakeru isn't even in Capcom Cup yet. Uh, but I don't know if a lot of people are going to count him out at this point in time, so... Uh, but I will say that, um, yeah, it might be nice for Snake Eyes to get a secondary character. Or, like I said, he's just going to be stubborn and just try to study Kakeru so he knows how to fight him. So, like I said, it might not necessarily be a character thing. I mean, it might just be that Zangief just, he just, he tries harder with Zangief, you know? It just works that way. God, that wasn't even... Was that a punish counter there? 
No, it wasn't. He just caught him. Oh, uh, uh, finally went for that mix-up again. So after the bracket reset, he was like, time to reestablish this mix-up. And Randall was like, nope, sorry. Oh, God. And why is Zangief stuck in with SPD for 19,000 years? Why? But you see there, after blocking the ground spike here, one of the mix-ups that he chose to do was just walk forward. Because I think this time Reynolds was trying to see if he was going to jump forward. If he was going to jump forward, he can react to the jump by throwing a closer ground spike. Might not necessarily hit him out of the air, but it'll lock him in place. So instead, he waits to see if Snake Eyes jumps, and Snake Eyes decides to walk forward. Oh, he actually goes for the portal. So again, Snake Eyes using the portal activation to get closer and closer and closer. Uh, yeah, I mean, blocking instead of pairing them, definitely, yeah, because, again, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference, and that you will miss the parry more often, and uh, if you're wrong with the parry, you're stuck for a little bit, right? So it's not even necessarily meter management, it's just that Snake Eyes doesn't want to commit to the parry and be stuck in place for a little while, uh, basically. Snake Eyes doesn't like doing that, apparently. All right. Oh, God, there's that perfect parry again. Oh, and Burns Mouth. What is... Oh, no. Oh, no, that sucks for Reynolds. What a smart decision to burn him out. And then he just misses. Oh, oh if he dies because of that, this is going to be painful. But it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Oh, no. Reynolds, what happened? He just missed his nor. He didn't press the normal button. He just caught him, and then he just went for raw Streebog instead of button into Streebog. Oh. Two back-to-back -back crucial errors for Reynolds. If I was going to guess any point in time in which Reynolds lost the tournament, it was right here. <laughs> He lost the tournament right here. <laughs> he lost the tournament at this moment right here. Uh, Randall is strong enough that he wouldn't let this get to him, but I feel like this is, this is just a big, huge turn, turning point. I feel like this is a huge turning point. You're supposed to be up one round to zero, and you're just like, what happened? <laughs> what happened? I, I want to see how Randall plays this round to see how he recovered from this. All right, there's the crouching medium kick, crouching medium kick strategy. Oh, there it is again. That time Snake Eyes walked the portal off the screen. Oh no, actually it was JP who did it as well. A lot of the time Snake Eyes didn't walk the portal off the screen. A lot of times it was actually Reynold doing the work for him. I know a lot of people talked about him walking the portal off the screen, but that actually hasn't been Snake's MO that much. He hasn't been doing it that much. Oh, that's an unfortunate whiff. Could have been way worse than that. He could have actually punished, but wow, what a reaction. And Snake Eyes is going for the kill here. He's trying to go for the kibosh here. Get some pressure, plus frames. Oh, gets the... That was a punish counter? Wow. Still no SPD mix-up. And yeah, see, here's that situation again, Laura. Like I said, he's just going in for the kill. He doesn't care if he gets anti-air. He just knows one right guess will win. So because he has so much health in this situation right here, when he's trying to go for the kill, he knows he can just kind of hail Mary around a lot, especially with jumps, because you're not going to get damaged all that badly when you jump. So he's just trying to find a way in and just finish the round off. He's being super aggressive here. And now he just checks that, so. Yeah, so now Reynolds is down 0-1. And so in this situation here, oh my gosh, we must uncover the truth behind the greatest evil that is JP, right? So we must find out how to defeat JP. All right. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's not nowadays. They've always had unskippable ads. <laughs> Here we go. 
it's an option you can set as a creator. <laughs> play unskippable ads or play non-unskippable ads. It's just an option that you have. Uh, here we go. Uh, with punish again. Beautiful spacing by Snake Eyes. And oh man, now Reynold. Yeah, so I think Snake Eyes is starting to detect a little bit of a panic. Just goes for the meaty, gets the combo. Yeah, the hardest part is like I feel like Reynolds OD OD portals haven't been netting anything. You notice how I've talked about the OD portals a lot and that Snake Eyes is using the opportunity to walk forward. And while that does cover a lot of range and allows Reynolds to drive rush in or go in for the low or into the throw mix up, honestly the OD portals have not been netting him a lot. I really don't feel like the OD portals have been putting in the work. And so because Reynold is still so obsessed with using them, Snake Eyes has really started reading that and using those opportunities to advance forward during the activation. Because the thing is, if you're fighting against the JP, you're so scared of ground spikes. A lot of times when they activate portal, you're try you think it's going to be a ground spike. So you stop and stop walking and block. But as you can see here in these situations, Snake Eyes just doesn't even stop. He's just like, you're going to OD portal again, and I'm just going to walk and get close to you all of a sudden. I don't know if Reynold realized that I think the OD portals were actually one of the things that were starting to hurt him at this point in time. And so, yeah, you see him going to see it right there, the OD portal again. It was right when uh, Snake Eyes decided to jump here. And it just worked out for Snake Eyes. And checking the drive rush. Yeah, so Reynold... Oof, this is... Yeah. <laughs> like I said, Reynold is an amazing player. I'm not going to say he cracked. But it's, it's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good right now. That's a nice reprieve, but it's a perfect parry. So you don't get any damage off of it. Snake Eyes says, throw me, whatever. This full screen stuff hasn't been the problem. And again, see, see, remember I said the JP has to guess, right? So after the ground spike, he said, I'm going for the ghost. And so Snake Eyes jumped and he nullifies the ghost again. Every time you block the ground spike from a screen away, it's neutral. Remember that it's right. <laughs> the, the, Suburban Socrates in the chat says, I'm not going to say he cracked, but he cracked. <laughs> like that's literally how I feel right now. And so Snake Eyes knows he doesn't have to do anything. And again, uh, I've, I keep saying this. It's not the zoning from JP that's the problem. It's the offense. Snake Eyes hasn't been zoned, like, at all. Like, during this entire time I've been analyzing this match, there's no point at which I have been saying, oh, and here's Snake Eyes having trouble getting past everything. That has not happened at all. Right, Nathan? It hasn't happened at all. <laughs> you see, he agrees. Good kitty. You know. You know how it works with JP. Meow. <laughs> yes. Call and response, baby. All right. So again, that's the mix-up. This is the... This is the, the, the number one mix-up that Reynold has gotten is OD portal into throw or low. And that's the damage it results in. It's just like, it's Snake Eyes just doesn't care. Again, whatever. I don't care. And now back to this full screen again. Blocks, see? After blocking the ghost. After blocking the ghost. You see how Snake Eyes just micro-walked and blocked. Because again, after you block the ghost, you respect JP. If you block the ghost at first full screen, it is his advantage. So Snake Eyes didn't do anything except micro walk and block, block the ground spike. Guess what? Guess what? Now it is time to be go back to neutral. <laughs> uh, w Nick says, one, I'm glad there'll be a Geef and Capcom Cup. And two, my hair looks good today. Thank you. I kind of think so myself too. I kind of like the way my hair looks today. Uh, but you see, you see, this is what the JP has to do. You see how he did the closer ground spike. And that's how you punish the forward jump, right? 
This is what the JPs have to do. They have to react to the forward jump and spike you out of the air like that for you jumping forward. But if you suspect that he's going to look for that, then you don't walk forward at all. And you just stay in place or just start walking. And as soon as you see him try to do a spike block, and then you're back into that neutral state again. So uh, the thing is, even though like a lot of people are going to play and block a ground spike and jump forward and then get hit by this spike and go like, God damn it, you can't do anything to this character. You get hit by spike everywhere. It's too powerful. Well, it's not. And this is the key thing is every time you block a ground spike, it's a guessing game. If he hits you, it's your fault. He has to guess too. Because if Snake Eyes didn't jump and if he stayed in place, that spike would have just went right in front of him. And then Snake Eyes has 60 frames to walk forward, <laughs> right? Like, that's just what it comes down to. Snake Eyes guessed wrong in this situation. He took a small chunk of damage. Snake Eyes is going to brush it off. It's whatever. I, I'll, I'll come back to this again. Here we go. And see, just keep trying to... Oh, you cheeky bastard. And see what I mean? Like, it didn't bother him at all. And in fact, the fact that he was right almost kind of looked like it gave Reynold more confidence in it. So that he was like, okay, cool. So I'm going to block all this stuff. You are having a field day with this. Time for you to get caught. So it's almost like because he knew Reynold finally had some success in the zoning game. That's like the first time where the zoning <laughs> worked. Immediately Snake Eyes goes, you know what? You're feeling like your zoning is working. Here's my zoning killing uh, crush your dreams <laughs> sequence here. So Blau, okay. Oh, he turns him around. That's interesting. Wasn't expecting that. Oh, because he was that close to the corner. Wow, I didn't realize he was that close to the corner. Oh, the armor. How often has Snake Eyes done this? This is the, like the third standing fierce fourth one, and then he just goes for the armor and gets the knockdown. Oh, and again, the headbutt. Look at the read on the headbutt over here. Like... Dude, you went for that slow of a move on someone's landing when they jump? A lot of people like to empty jump and hit buttons. You knew you could sneak in the headbutt and get plus frames. And then there we... Oh. Oh, level two? Yeah, you're just like, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. I'll go full screen again. I'll go full screen again. So block the jump away. Whatever. No threat. Nullified. I don't care. Whatever, I'll block this mig. Throw me. Go ahead, throw me. And then he just drive impacts out of nowhere? What the hell made him drive impact? <laughs> and this is the hardest thing. Is like sometimes when you analyze these matches, I don't even know how to analyze that. Like, <laughs> why did he do that? <laughs> Snake Eyes is just God. It's just really what it comes down to. This guy's ridiculous. <laughs> I have no intelligent thing to say about that. I wasn't expecting a drive impact. I never would have drive impacted there. Sometimes you're just built different, man. <laughs> oh, he fights so many JPs. And he's lost to a lot of them, too. So you don't think he gets better, huh? <laughs> you know, this guy gets better. Oh, man. The check on the drive rush again. He has not been able to drive rush on Snake Eyes very much. Oh, there we go. La EX Lariat. Interesting. Just wanted to get a little extra damage and a little bit closer spacing. Good spacing from Reynold there. And now Reynold does get that drive impact. Great whiff punish. Oh, beautiful trade. Good trade for him. But again, Reynold is trying to be super aggressive right now. He's kind of panicking at this point. Look at this drive rush in there, getting hit, getting swept now. Snake Eyes has pressed more buttons at the start of this round than I feel like he has pressed in like the last two games. It's crazy. Look at this. There's five, there's four moves right there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's getting hit. 10, 11, 12. He did heavy kick. When has he done heavy kick before? He just did it. He knows that something is happening. He smells blood. 
and he is swinging. 13. 14. Dude, he is swinging so much. 15. So look at this. This is a slugfest all of a sudden. These two are just smacking each other all over the place. Dude, that's been a crazy start of the round. Snake Eye smells blood. He's going in for the kill right now. That is clearly what he's doing. Because he also sees that Reynold is being a little bit more active as well. The mental fatigue is kicking in at this point in time. It's so hard to stay this solid for so long defending uh, against this kind of game here. And so Reynold is definitely cracking a little. Look at that. You see again? I, I said it. I think it's the OD portals that killed Reynold. Look at that. Look what happened there. And even though he gets that situation, look, look at what it all set up here. It's the OD portals, I feel like, usually is what's been killing him, honestly. <laughs> I really do think... Jesus. I, I hope you guys can hear those meows. More old OD portals. And like I said, they're working. This is the, th that's the most damage that Reynolds has gotten from the OD portal in three sets. That's the most damage he's gotten from the OD portals in three sets, in my opinion. Oh, no. Oh, the classic bait the throw into SPD. Oh, extra damage, punish counter, overhead. Yep, get away from there. And the thing is, like, Zangiefs like to do this, and everybody copies this from Snake Eyes. If you're a player playing against a Zangief, watch for this. And as soon as you see him start, just drive impact. He dies. <laughs> just drive impact in that situation. Meow. Meow. Oh, there it is. <laughs> just drive impact. Sorry, Zangief players, but that is a very powerful weapon here. Oh no, you just got jumped in on, and now here we go, big combo. We are, oh, you see like how Reynolds, like he's just like, yeah, he doesn't have the patience anymore. He doesn't want to try to play the zoning game anymore. He's mentally exhausted at this point. And again, it happens to all of us. I've seen it happen to all the top players. You just get mentally exhausted and look dashing forward for no reason at this point. He just wants to kind of end this. And there's that OD portal again. And again, he gets the mix up. But again, if you're Snake Eyes, getting thrown a full screen away hasn't hurt you. Who cares? I'll get back up there again sooner or later. I just, I have plenty of OD gauge here just to block all this stuff. Look at this. There's just no reason for him to, to be scared here. Look how, oh yeah, and he did the multiple parry there. So this is drive gauge management right here. So again, he had a lot of drive gauge. He had, in fact, he had four bars at this point right here, right? And so he's like, you know what? I got thrown. I got plenty of bar here to block. Block, 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 block. Okay, orange now, block, block. Now he's a little worried. So now he's parrying multiple attacks here because he needs to build some of that back, right? So see how he held it there? And then he jumped away because he wasn't gonna let him w jump and throw. So he just wanted to maintain his OD gauge so he can still continue to walk up at him. And as soon as Reynold saw that he was starting to parry these things, he was like, shit, I gotta stop him for this. And now we're back to this and now he's in. Oh, what a good throw here. Back to a full screen. There's the, o the OD portals again. And he's going to get him burned out. Is he? Is he? Oh, he's just shy. Oh, God. There it is, the burnout, finally. Yeah, so he just wanted that burnout to set up the level two. And he got him. But again, where really not much damage. Oh, no. I think Snake Eyes actually was trying to tech for once. I think he was actually trying to tech because he was scared he was going to get it killed by the throw because he knows if he gets thrown here he dies by chip if he gets thrown here he dies by chip so he's like you know what i have to tech 
I have to tech. And instead, Reynold went for the heavy kick, and it just didn't hit. Oh, that is a problem. And yeah, he's got plenty of time. He's going to get his drive gauge back, finds a hit. Oh, and that's a two-hit combo? So here we go. Comes in there, medium punch, medium punch, punish counter. So Reynold, even with an execution error, doing the target combo, which is completely punishable on two hits, Snake Eyes gets the punish counter into the combo, and ta-da, there you go. Uh, there wasn't an option select that I saw, Suburban Socrates. What do you, which one are you referring to as the option select right there? But again, uh, geez, like, the, the way Snake Eyes played this was too good. It was too good. It was honestly way too strong. And, uh, it was just so much of decision making. And I, like I said, I feel like a lot of that really came from his read on the over-reliance on OD Portal. I felt like the OD Portal was such a big thing. And again, you saw how he patiently played against the, uh, the spikes and how important it was. Uh, oh, it could have been delay tech. When you say he was trying to tech, but he got to throw himself. No, I think he was just going for the tech. I think he was literally just going for the tech. Uh, but it's not even just Zangief players can learn from the match. Everybody can learn from that match. Because, again, yeah, Snake Eyes won that. But how much of that was really like Zangief won that match, right? <laughs> how much of that honestly was Zangief won that match? Clearly, a couple of times he got the SPD. You know, having the level two be able to vacuum from a little bit farther away was nice and stuff like that. But honestly, this is this the key to this one really was that at no point in time was Snake Eyes scared of the zoning. He was not frustrated by the zoning. And in fact, Reynold kept kind of buying into that. Every time he made it past the zoning, Reynold went in and tried to fight at the mid screen with him. Maybe if Reynold had been a little more aggressive with the zoning, more backdashes, but again, then you just put yourself in the corner and Snake Eyes would have been happy with that as well. So again, the key is, especially because like I said, a lot of people hate fighting JP. And I keep saying this, is that when he first came out, everyone was like, this character's broken. His zoning is too strong. And like in the first week or second week, I was like, no, I don't believe it. I think we'll figure JP out. I think he'll get weaker. And then at one point in time, I dropped JP down to under top five in my tier list because that's exactly what happened. We started figuring out how to fight his zoning. And then all the JPs were like, wait a minute. We're in modern Street Fighter. If I'm a zoner, that means I've got great offense. And then he came and just basically became an offensive monster. And then I put him back into the top five. I was like, okay, wait, no, this character is, uh, he's kind of good. He's kind of good because Kakeru showed us a lot of that as well. But if you know how to fight the zoning, if you know what you're looking for, the zoning, a lot of times when I lose the JPs, it's when they come on the offense against me. And then also when I get impatient and I block a ghost and I jump and I get hit by a spike. But every time that happens, I'm like, oh shit, James, you messed up. And it wasn't like, this character zoning is so stupid. It's just, I blocked a ghost. Why did I jump? I blocked a ghost. Why am I trying to do something? Ghost into Spike is inescapable at full screen. But Spike resets everything to neutral. So it's all you're looking for is the Spike, is the Spike, is the Spike. As soon as you block the ground Spike, it's a mix-up game. And does JP sort of have an advantage at that full screen? Yeah, because if he's wrong, you don't really get to kill him. But that's the thing. That's the whole idea of fighting a zoner is that, you know, you want them to miss. Like I said, you're playing a shmup, right? When you play a shmup, a shoot 'em up, 
you know, when you find the gap in the bullets, you're not going into the gap in the bullets so that you can shoot the secret core and the ship blows up. You do it so you can live and just keep shooting and doing tiny bits of damage, right? That's essentially kind of how you want to look at it when you're fighting a zoner. You might not necessarily get the big hit, but as long as you stay in the gaps, you're inching closer and closer and can get a little bit more and more damage. Uh, Daigo was experimenting with dashing forward versus JP, etc., etc. <laughs> Whenever you get impatient, just realize it's not as bad as being Lex Luthor dealing with General Zod zoning in Injustice 1. Dude, Injustice 1, holy crap. <laughs> Man, you hate zoners? I hope you didn't play Injustice 1, man. I miss the zoners in Injustice because they really... NRS used to be king of zoners, man. And then MK11, it was like Cetrion. And that was kind of it, man. It was weird. Oh, man. But yeah, uh, this, is, this is the thing, right? So Snake Eyes 1... It wasn't off the back of Zangief. It was really just off of the back that he played really smart and Reynold never adapted, right? So again, Reynold is an amazing player and he did a lot of cool things. He exacted his mix up and he was playing his game. But I really feel like the OD teleport in the end was what was doing him in. I think he probably needed to maybe save the meter for other options, maybe OD spikes instead, or maybe for very, very clear drive reversal situations or something. I don't know if Snake Eyes presented any drive reversible situations, but he never did OD amnesias and stuff. And I, I just felt like Reynold didn't realize that it was the OD portals that were kind of doing him in uh, at that point in time, so. <laughs> I was a Nightwing player, and finding Deathstroke made me want to kick trees. Yeah. <clears throat> fighting Dalsam more difficult than JP lately? I mean, it can be, but that's also because, Valkyrie, that you're fighting like 900 JPs. <laughs> I got into Master, and I started playing Master. I'm like, Ken, Ken, JP, Luke, Ken, JP, Guile, Luke, Ken, JP, 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 Ken, 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 Luke. Guile, and I was just like, Jesus Christ, I hate this place. I hate this place. <laughs> but again, the, the reason why we're losing to Dalsim is because you're not as familiar with him. You got to understand the gaps in his play as well. Honestly, that that's kind of the thing. And we're not and they're not as obvious as JP's gaps. Honestly, they're not. Uh, but it's the same idea. It, it's it's the same idea. Yeah, I've run into a couple of Giles. Maybe I just noticed because I think Kim versus Guile sucks. I hate that match a lot. <laughs> but I've run into quite a few Giles in, in Master for sure. But Ken, Luke, and JP, Jesus, they are everywhere. And it's so annoying. <laughs> Especially Ken. Again, in the last segment, you know, bias mo unbiased mode off. God, I freaking hate Ken so much. I hate fighting Ken so, so much. He's too good. He has too much stuff, dude. Oh, God, he's annoying. That standing fierce makes me so... He has the best shimmy in the entire game because of that stupid standing fierce. Like, a lot of times when I'm Kimberly and I want to punish you, you know, with the shimmy, with the standing fierce... Like, I can't even hit you because I walk too far out of the range. Ken Standing Fierce punishes all the low jabs and every two that Fierce hits so goddamn far, dude. <laughs> hate that button. I hate that button. And I hate Dragon Lash, too. But anyways, ugh. <sighs> God, I hate fighting Ken. So I get so tilted when I fight Ken. Oh, okay, unbiased mode back on. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, that's how you, that's how Snake Eyes won that. And, you know, hopefully by watching this, you can understand what I mean that, you know, th just because Snake Eyes was able to win with Zangief doesn't make Zangief, doesn't mean that Zangief is a strong character. Because, uh, again, if he had an affinity, if he had a bond, like we're talking RPGs here, right? If he had an affinity to the character, yes, Snake Eyes would do better with other characters. 
But as it is, because he has an affinity for Zangief, because his Zangief just has a natural bond and, and ups his stats better than it ups, uh, you know, other characters up his stats, you know, Snake Eyes is able to accomplish these things with Zangief, right? I don't want to create that narrative of, imagine if Snake Eyes played this character, oh my god, he'd be unbeatable. I don't know if that's true. Like I said, Zangief brings something out in him. Character bond is so important, dude. Like, this is why when I say a lot of times when it comes to fighting games, pick a character that you have a reason you want to pick because you like the way they look, because of character loyalty, because you like their style or whatever like that. It's more important to pick a character that you like than it is to pick a top tier character. I 100% believe that. Now, if you're also a player who's hardcore into trying to get the million dollars here, yeah, I can see you trying to switch off a little bit, but that's for players like... You know, if you're like Mana RD, or if you're like Sien, or if you're like Daigo, because clearly you're good enough to play any character and you can make them amazing. <laughs> like if you're Punk, right? Like Cami, I think is way judged higher because of Punk <laughs> than, <laughs> than because of the character. Uh, but, oh, that's, I mean, I can't say that because there's a lot of Camis in Master, to be fair. To be fair. Not gonna downplay Cami. I'm not gonna downplay Cami. Uh, but again, like, you know, just, if you're at that level, yeah, you can switch characters. But if you're not fighting for that million dollars, realistically, play the character that you like, man. It helps. It helps a lot. So, yeah, I, I don't have to drop Manon. He wanted to play a new Laura. And what he was hoping was that Manon would be the strike grappler like Laura was. Manon is not a strike grappler. Like, Laura has a lot of better ways to brawl. Manon doesn't have the ability to brawl. This is the weakness of Manon compared to Laura. Laura, like, the light elbow is still only minus two. It isn't, uh, it isn't punishable. Uh, he had the thunderclap, like, seriously, nobody was better at neutral thunderclap than Idom. Manon has none of these kind of tools. Like, all our pirouette kicks are super minus on block and super punishable, right? Standing heavy kick is very drive impactable. He doesn't have that ability to brawl with Manon, so I don't think that's the right character for him. And in fact, Idom should play Marisa <laughs> and just use the scutum and then use the brawl factor of Marisa the way that he plays Laura. I think he would feel a lot more at home with Marisa than he would uh, Manon, honestly, because I feel like he would have a better idea. He would play it more, he would feel more at home with that character. So that, that's my assessment in any case, because like I said, Manon was less brawler than I expected, more traditional grappler. And so, uh, like, and it's weird, Manon's stock is just dropping, it's crazy. But again, grapplers just aren't particularly strong in this game. This game is very, very anti-grappler. Uh, Street Fighter VI, shockingly, is very anti-grappler. Uh, they made it very hard for grapplers to succeed in this game. So, uh, yeah, I hope Idom does change characters, honestly. I really do, because he's... Manon isn't, isn't working for him, and I don't think it's his fault. I think it's Manon's fault uh, more than anything. So, uh, in any case, uh, that's all I've got for today. So there was a little analysis there, and, you know, it's, it's really cool to break down. And let me know if you like this. If you want me to do this more often on It Was Tuesday where I just talk about a topic and then break down a match like that. If you find this very educational, this one was long because it happened to be three sets, right? With a grand finals reset. So this one was pretty long. Uh, obviously in the future, I'll try to do shorter sets and then we can kind of get a better idea of what's going on. But you know, that will help a lot and it'll help me too in my own commentary as well. So if you guys really enjoyed this, and, and again, the way I analyze things, I, again, you know, I know a bunch of people analyze this set, right? But my unique perspective is always going to be that I, I also read, like, that one moment, that one round that Reynolds, all that stuff dropped. I was just like, yeah, this is done. 
Like, <laughs> Randall lost. And you could kind of see it, right? Like, I'm really good at reading the emotional cues in the game. And uh, that's one of my favorite things to see. So, uh, if you guys enjoyed this, especially here on YouTube, if you've even made it this far, let me know if this is something that you would want to see more often. Uh, and I will be more than happy to do so. But, uh, there you go. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, sorry about last week for having no show, but uh, I did two shows the week before, so maybe that made up for it. I don't know. <laughs> In any case, uh, we're still at a great time for fighting games, so hashtag let's fight together. Uh, again, that's my battle cree for 2023 now. Uh, let's fight together, all the fighting games together. MK1, Tekken 8 doing some cool things coming very, very soon. I mean, isn't, isn't MK coming out in like two days or something like that? Isn't MK coming out in like two or three days? I forgot what the exact release date is, but definitely uh, a lot. Oh, two weeks, two weeks. Okay, so it's coming soon. So exciting time here for fighting game players. So again, let's all fight together. Uh, Nathan. Oh, I heard a little chirp there. Come on, Nathan. Let's do it. Big one here. Big one, Nathan. That's not a big one, Nathan. Oh, you're just chirping. He's just chirping. All right, fine. All right, well, for you guys, the day this podcast graced your ears was clearly the most important day of your life, but for me. It was Tuesday.